Welcome to lesson 1.4, Patterns and Relations. In this lesson, we're going to look at the relationships in patterns. By the end of this lesson, students will learn to determine a relation, which is an algebraic expression, to represent a pattern. The best way to introduce algebraic expressions is to, sorry, as problems is to introduce them as patterns. Consider the following patterns of blocks. If you take a look at the first one, you'll notice that we have one triangle, we have a base of 1. So if I was going to be putting these in a table, it's kind of like a sideways t-chart. And we have one triangle, and sorry, one base and one triangle. If you notice on base 2, we now have 1, 2, 3, 4 triangles. On a base of 3, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 triangles. And if you were to continue this pattern, base 4 would be 16. So what is the relationship between the length of the base and the number of triangles? Well, if you look at this, you would notice that there's, there is the number of sorry, the, sorry, the triangles are really the base multiplied by itself. So we have the base times the base. If I have one triangle, one times one is, sorry, one base, one times one is one triangle. If I have a base of two, two times two is four triangles. And the base of three, I end up with nine triangles. So another way to do this is to use a variable to represent the base. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use b as my variable which represents the base of the triangles. So I'm going to have b times b, or if you wish, you can go into the exponents and have the triangles equal to b squared. And you can see if what I've done, I've actually jumped ahead of myself here. This is b times b or b squared. Okay, how many triangles would you get if you had a base of 7? In this case, when you're doing this, you're going to put down the formula, the substitution, and the answer. So to get the number of triangles, I take the base and I multiply it by the base. Since I'm given 7 as the base, it's 7 times 7, which is 49. Okay, let's try another example. Each side of the polygon given to you is 3 centimeters long. So that's 3, that's 3, and that's 3. Also, this is 3, 3, 3, and 3. So every side length on all of these polygons is 3 centimeters long. If you take a look at the number of sides, uh, the perimeter, so we have a three-sided object right here, you have 3 here, plus 3, plus 3, so that ends up giving you 9 as your perimeter. Remember, perimeter is the distance around the outside of an object. So if you have 4 sides, it's 3, 6, 9, 12. If you have 5 sides, it's 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. And if you have 6, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. So what is the relationship between the number of sides and the length of the perimeter? Well, we've got to get from 3 to 9, 4 to 12, 5 to 15, and 6 to 18. In this case, we're multiplying the number of sides by 3. So we let the number of sides represented by the variable n, this becomes 3 times n. Remember that when you have brackets or parentheses side by side, that means multiplication. Sometimes, though, we're not going to get a diagram. You're just going to get a table to look at. And we have a term number. This means that this is our first number, this is our second number, this is our third number. 
And then we have the term that we, we're getting from that term number. So this is very similar to what we did before, but you saw this in a t-chart before, where the term number was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and the term result was 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So this is your term number. This is what you would calculate your term. So how are we getting from 1 to 3, 2 to 4, 3 to 5, 4 to 6, and 5 to 7? In this case, you'll notice that we are going up 2 each time. 1 plus 2 is 3. 2 plus 2 is 4. 3 plus 2 is 5. 4 plus 2 is 6. And 5 plus 2 is 7. So whatever the term number is, we're going to add to that the amount of 2. So what is the ninth term? Well, the term number is, not, is going to be 9, so it's going to be 9 plus 2, which means your ninth term is going to be 11. Now this next question is actually reversing itself. He wants to know what term is the number 2003. So no, it's the same thing. So it's 203 plus 2 is equal to 205. Okay, let's do the next example, but I won't redraw the table for you. Term number is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, as shown. The term is 9, 18, 27, 36, 45. What are we doing to get from the term number to the term? So we want to get from the top to the bottom. In this case, we're multiplying the term number by 9. So we have to choose a variable to represent the term number so that we can get the expression. And I'm going to let the term number be t. So in this case, it's going to be 9t. If you want to put brackets around it, you can. Try to stay away from the x, because if we have 9xt, we're not sure whether x is a variable or not. So we're trying to get away from using x's. So if we know that 9t is the relation or the expression that we're using, you can now calculate the value of the eighth term. So the eighth term is going to be 8 times 9. So that's going to be 72. What is the fifth term? Oh, sorry, we're changing gears now. All right, here's another, ex another expression, completely different question. What is the fifth term in the sequence represented by x plus 5? Well, this here is our x, and we're adding 5, so it's going to be x plus 5. Since we know that the x is a 5, we know that it's going to be 10. The next one is giving you a, a relation or an expression of 3x plus 2. And they want you to write the first five terms. So when x is equal to 1, the term is going to be 1 times 3, or 3 times 1, plus 2. So my first term is going to be 5. My second term, that's when x is equal to 2, that's going to be 3 times 2 plus 2, and that's going to be equal to 8. Also, if x is 3, 3 times 3 is 9, plus 2 is 11. If it's 4, 3 times 4 is 12, plus 2 is 14. And if it's 5, 3 times 5 is 15, plus 2 is 17. So those are the first five terms in the sequence of 3x plus 2. Okay, let's try another one. What is the expression for the sequence 6, 7, 8, 9? Now, to do this, you're not asking yourself how you get from 6 to 7 and 7 to 8. You have to create a table, right? And you have to say that you're going to have term, number, and term. And what's going to happen here is that 6, 7, 8, 9 goes on the bottom. 
Now what happens on the top is the 6 is your first term because it's the first number in the series. The 7 is the second number in the series. The 8 is the third number, and the fourth number is 9. So now, looking at going from 1 to 6, 2 to 7, 3 to 8, and 4 to 9, you should see that we are adding 5 each time. Now, it wants an expression, so I need a variable. So I'm going to use t as my variable, and I'm going to put down t plus 5 as my expression. That means whatever number the term is, I can calculate it with the sequence or the number that sequence is. Here's the next one. What is the expression for the sequence 2, 4, 6, 8? Again, start your here's thing here. If you want to use input and output, I actually prefer input output rather than terms and term numbers because I find terms and term numbers kind of just kind of a uh, mix up. It's easy to mix up. So if I input, the first input gave me a 2, it's the first number, and the second number gave me a 4, the third number is a 6, and the fourth number is an 8. So how am I getting from my input to my output? And you should see that every one of the outputs is just doubling the input, so we're multiplying by 2. So if you have your your input is i or, or t or n or whatever variable you use, you're going to be multiplying by 2. So if you use n, you're going to end up with 2n, which is 2 times n. So whatever the variable is, sorry, whatever the, uh, the top input is, you just multiply it by 2 to get the output. Okay, we're ready for your assignment. This is going to take some work. I want you to uh, take it slowly, think about it, and you should be able to get these. So I'm going to I'm going to change the assignment rather than these numbers. I want you to complete page 23 numbers 1 2 My textbook out here and look at it. 3 5 6, 7, and 8. So I'm taking out question 4. I don't want you to do question 9. Normally I assigned it, but I don't want you doing that. Okay, so off you go. Let's get this done. We'll correct it hopefully soon.